it's also a good idea that even if you're not feeling an anxiety attack to just maybe take a few moments for a clarity break several times per day, you know, three to five times per day where you just take several moments, maybe set your alarm and just do this breathing exercise because it starts to clear your mind. It takes you out of whatever you're in at the moment. And it takes you away from that and brings you present. It gives you presence. And presence is one of the ways to be mindful. And mindfulness is one of the ways to get around anxiety. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Flow Over Fear podcast, where it is our mission to help you to rise above fear and realize your ultimate potential in leadership and life. I'm your host, Adam Hill, and it is my goal to share with you the human side of high performance. My guests share their experience with fear, anxiety, struggle, challenge, and most importantly, despite all of it, how they rose above it to achieve incredible results. So if you're ready to rise up, let's get started. Hey, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Flow Over Fear and Three Things. Today, I want to share with you three simple ways to keep anxiety at bay uh, on the day to day. Hey, that rhymed. Um, so I hope you'll stay and I'll stop rhyming now because I can't think of any more. But anyway, moving on, I digress. This is important because I know a, a lot recently I've been talking a lot about, uh, you know, some of the some of the aspects of fear and some of how it comes up in our lives. But I wanted to give some actionable tools, some very simple and start with simple. Simple, actionable tools that uh, that can help anybody in the, in the moment that is experiencing anxiety uh, in in various forms. And I know that anxiety can be very, very debilitating. It's very challenging to deal with in the moment. Um, and for many of you, many of you who have experienced it in the past may know about these tools. And if you do, if you, if you use them, and uh, you know you're, you're already very, very, very much familiar with them, that's okay move on, you know, we can, um, we'll address something new next week, but I wanted to share this with people that might be experiencing this and not know the tools that they can use in this time. And, um, you know, before I get into it, I just want to preface by saying that I don't have any letters after my name. I am not a doctor. And so uh, the, no, none of this is medical advice. Um, you know, if you're feeling like you are having a serious medical issue, certainly, Go see somebody with those letters after their names. You know, go to go to a, go to a, a licensed medical professional. Uh, this is simply just tools that have worked for me and for many others to help with their anxiety in the moment. Um, and the reason I want to start with simple is because there's a lot of noise out there around mental health, and a lot of that noise revolves around more complex ways to help with this stuff. It's kind of like our diet industry, where I believe we all know the simple tools to maintain a healthy diet, which is, you know, eat as many vegetables as we can, don't, uh, uh, don't eat too much and don't eat too little. You'll want to make sure that you get an abundance of healthy foods in. That's basically it. But there's, that would satisfy about 90% of our diet culture right now. But what we lean into is the super, super complex uh, that is highly restrictive and, 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 and oftentimes a little bit dangerous. So I don't want to get into those kinds of things yet. Yes, there are uh, some great studies happening around different techniques to help alleviate anxiety, but they're still in the realm of study and they're still in the realm of complex. Uh, so I want to give everybody some simple tools that they can do right now without taking out their wallet and giving it to somebody or having to go online and research some complicated tutorial on something. So without further ado, this is what I want to provide. The first way to help keep anxiety at bay is breathing. Yes, that may seem simple. And yes, I just said that. You want to breathe. Of course you do. <laughs> uh, you do it without thinking. But a lot of times when you're breathing, you're breathing so shallow, you're breathing into the top of your lungs. And when you're feeling anxious and tight, what happens? Well, your muscles start to constrict and you breathe even more shallow. You're not getting full breaths into your lungs, which of course elevates that anxiety. It speeds up your, your, your breathing rate and 
it only feeds it and it becomes a downward spiral. You know what I'm talking about there? Does that, does that resonate? Um, I know it does with me because I still get into that trap. We just don't think about breathing because we don't have to. A, that's a huge blessing. But B, it's, uh, it's also to our detriment because when we're not conscious of it, we're probably not doing it right. So one of the ways in the moment, if you're feeling that anxiety, the best way is to, is to just turn your attention to your breath and start deliberately breathing in deeply. And when you do this, you want to breathe in very deep to your belly. So starting at your belly, just expand your belly, let your lungs fill up, you know, for just a few seconds. So just breathe in for a few seconds, really deep and hold it there for just a couple of beats. And as you let it out, don't really force anything out. You know, you just want to kind of let it out like you would let a balloon out. And as you let that air out, you want to relax uh, certain muscles in your body. First, your jaw. Focus on your jaw relaxing as you're breathing out. Focus on your shoulders relaxing as you're breathing out. And focus on your hands relaxing as you're breathing out. If you focus just on thro those three muscle groups, so those three parts of your body relaxing, you'll start to feel that sense of relaxation. And as you breathe out, you can breathe out completely and empty your lungs. And then you start that process again, breathing in for a few seconds, holding it at the top for a few more seconds, and then letting it go and relaxing your jaw, shoulders, and hands. Do that just 10 breaths like that. If you can do that slowly, just for 10 breaths, keeping your eyes closed. If you're not driving, don't do this driving or anything like that or operating mechanical equipment. Um, you'll want to step away from the, that mechanical equipment before you do these breathing exercises. But do that, and then you will, you will start to, by about breath five, start to feel the anxiety dissipate. It's going to take a few breaths, so don't be impatient. Just be okay with it and, uh, and, and, and recognize that it'll pass. Um, so just do 10 of those. That's, that's, that's the breathing exercise you want to do when you're in that. It's also a good idea that even if you're not feeling an anxiety attack, to just maybe take a few moments for a clarity break several times per day, you know, three to five times per day where you just take several moments, maybe set your alarm and just do this breathing exercise because it starts to clear your mind. It takes you out of whatever you're in at the moment. And it takes you away from that and brings you present. It gives you presence. And presence is one of the ways to be mindful. And mindfulness is one of the ways to get around anxiety. So, uh, so make sure that you're, you're, you're setting your alarm, doing those breathing exercises every day, uh, multiple times per day. The second simple thing to do to keep anxiety at bay is, a, is aerobic exercise. And this isn't putting on your favorite leotard and going and putting on the, uh, uh, what's her name? I was going to say Tina Fey, but it's not Tina Fey. It's uh, uh, Jane Fonda. I don't know why I thought Tina Fey, but anyway, Jane Fonda. Uh, uh, you don't want to put that on. Don't, don't worry about that. You don't need to put on your leotard. You don't need to go back to 1986. But what you want to do is you want to do some sort of aerobic exercise that keeps, that elevates your heart rate, but doesn't elevate it super, super high. That doesn't put you into that into that super stressed workout mode. Now, a lot of people like to do strength training for um, you know for relief of anxiety and stress, and that's great because uh, because you know strength training and and speed workouts really help to uh, you know to bring the chemistry alive and and help you to to uh, uh, to re relieve your anxiety. However, aerobic exercise has just this magical benefit of just keeping your heart rate lower than, than you know, your uh, lower, way lower than your max and just training your body to become a fat burning engine. And it, and it keeps you, it builds, it starts building endurance so that you are, um, so that you are running at a pace so that you can start to think clearly, you can start to develop that runner's high or that, that those endorphins that really kick your, your body up a notch. Plus it's sustainable. And you don't risk as highly getting injured by doing things like aerobic exercise. So one of the, one of the keys to, to uh, exercising aerobically is if you have a bike, 
you know, a bike is a great way to do it. If you want to go for a run, that's a, or a walk, even that's a great way to do it. You just want to get your heart rate up and you want to keep it lower than your maximum aerobic threshold. A good way to measure that is by using the Maffetone method. The Maffetone method is a really simple equation where you take 180 and you subtract your age and that will give you your maximum aerobic heart rate that you want to stay under. So for me, oh, great. I'm going to do math here. Um, I am 43 years old. Yeah, I know. I look great for my age. I appreciate that. But uh, if you subtract 180 from my age, that's 137. My goal would be to stay under 137 beats per minute during that exercise to keep myself in that aerobic state, keep it easy, keep it conversational. And then what you're going to find is over time, if you do that consistently, you're going to create more energy and you're going to create more positive energy, which is going to help reduce a lot of that anxiety. Um, uh, and also throw, I mean, throw in some higher efforts there, but you don't want to do too much of that. Um, uh, you want to keep that minimized to about 10% of your total, total workout load. But aerobic exercise is a great way to help with alleviating some of your anxiety. And then the third and final piece I want to share with you today is another simple exercise you can, you can do when you're feeling anxiety in the moment or you're feeling, and, and in this case, maybe even feeling a sense of self-pity or dread or, or something like that. And this is simple gratitude journaling. Uh, at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, at both of those times during the day, uh, you want to do you write three things that you're grateful for. At the beginning of the day, just write those three things that you're grateful for um, and get yourself into that mindset of focusing your, your attention on something that makes you grateful. It could be your family. It could be something very simple. And if you don't feel like there's anything that you have great to be grateful for, well, let's go back to that first thing we talked about, your breath, your ability to breathe. And now you're going to focus on your breath again. Pretty wonderful, right? Um, or your heart rate. You know, the fact that you have a, bar, a heart that beats for you no matter what during the course of your life. That's a pretty powerful thing to be, uh, to be grateful for. I just gave you two things. Um, but if you can think of three things in the morning, that is helpful. And then in the, in the evening, think back on your day. Think back on three things you can be grateful for that happened during the course of the day. And if you, and the reason you want to do these at the beginning and the end of the day is because a, the, the beginning of the day frames your, your day. If you could start it with a positive attitude and even greater, you can go back and watch my video on the morning method to help kind of create that morning practice. But if, if you start the beginning of the day with, with, with that positive attitude, you're taking that attitude into the rest of your day. And if you're finishing your day with the with that gratitude for the rest of the day you're setting the intention over the course of your night to sleep with that gratitude in mind and you can also do this exercise when you're feeling that anxiety maybe in the moment maybe after doing those 10 deep breaths uh double down on that make it a more powerful exercise by writing a couple of things that you're grateful for as well and one of those things can be your breath that's uh those are those are important things I know that anxiety can be painful. I experience and I continue to experience anxiety and panic attacks uh, throughout my life. And, um, and I've been able to uh, live and work through them and, and change my relationship with anxiety, even though those anxiety attacks are still very painful and very challenging and very difficult. I've been able to change my relationship with them. And I know that it's possible to do that. And this is one of the important, these are some of the important ways that you can change your relationship with anxiety is put the tools in place, uh, the simple tools first, put the simple tools in place first to address the anxiety as it happens on a day-to-day -day basis, and then implement the strategies to, uh, to keep that maintenance mode in place. Things like the morning method, uh, things like, you know, looking at, uh, uh, you know, what your uh, what your caffeine intake is and, and things like that. Um, making sure you're getting enough water and enough nutrition. Um, those are the kinds of things you, you want to look at on a daily basis, but in the moment, you know, as far as the simple things are concerned, look at practice some breathing exercises, uh, implement some aerobic exercise into your routine and do some gratitude journaling. Start with those three steps and see where that takes you. Until next time, thanks for joining me on, on Flow Over Fear. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Flow Over Fear podcast. 
If you'd like to learn more about getting into flow and learn the foundations of flow, I have a free video series on my website at www.adamcliffordhill.com called The Foundations of Flow. Feel free to go there and download it and start your journey to rising above fear and achieving greater flow in your life. And if you like this episode, and I'm guessing you did if you stuck around for this long, then please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and you will receive notifications when I have new interviews, new recaps, and new trainings that pop up on YouTube. Thanks again for joining us.